Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Well, Lori, hey, guess who's back? Lori's back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so, Lori, this video is going to be about safety in Mexico. Now, do you feel that it's safe here? How do you feel about that subject? Well, this subject, I'm totally feel safe in here. I don't be afraid or scared or anything, you know, just be in my area. I feel safe, 100%. Good, good. Okay, let's get in this video and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Today, I want to talk about what's happening here in Lake Chapala in the Ahihik area. There's actually a distance of about 20 miles from Chapala to Holtatepec. And there are little expat communities along here. And so I'm going to give you an update on what's happening here locally. And also we're going to talk about the bigger scale of Mexico and what's happening in different parts of Mexico. Is it safe to travel in Mexico? I'm going to show you two uh, news broadcasts that talk about safety in Mexico. So let's go into the first one right now. Spotlight on new travel warnings for Mexico. This video was captured as four Americans were involved in a kidnapping that turned deadly during a cartel shootout near the northern Mexico border city of Matamoros. Now travel warnings are in the spotlight. A level four do not travel warning, the highest travel warning given by the State Department is in effect for Tamalupa, state where Matamoros is located. U.S. government employees have been instructed to avoid the area until further notice. Baja California is at level three, a reconsider travel to warning due to crime and kidnapping. Well, it's terrifying to see that cartels have the power to sort of stop traffic. The Department of State has uh, released and, and placed a warning on the state of Tamaulipas, in addition to five other states in the country, a no travel warning, giving the, the large amounts of crime and kidnapping that occur in, in the state, as well as in other parts of Mexico. I also spoke with Ev Mead, a former UCSD and USD professor who specializes in studies of violence, migration, and peace. He says, while this is a terrifying circumstance, it shouldn't stop people from traveling to Mexico. This was a pretty rare event. Um, and it almost never happens, actually. But I always think that these are opportunities to open a broader conversation about what's going on in Mexico. However, former FBI hostage rescue team member Rob D'Amico advises to not travel to Mexico. But he says if you are willing to take that risk, be cautious. Situational awareness is the most important thing. Understanding your surroundings. It's, it's not like you're walking down your street, so don't have your head down in your phone. Read before you go. Again, all the travel warnings that State Department puts out and, and everything you can get about that area you have. You know, I'm starting a new program for the first time. And what it is, I'm going to uh, giving you a phone number. It's right down here. You see the phone number? Well, if you call that and you leave a message, now I'm not going to be returning calls. I'll want you to give me one message, maybe about two minutes long. Ask me what you would like, and I'll be answering it in upcoming videos. Well, one of the things that is very unusual in the area that we live here, in the Lake Chapala area, it's actually, it's a bubble. It's quite an interesting place. Most of Mexico isn't like this. And uh, so we don't have the drug problems that you'll have at some of the resort areas. And so it's a little bit, you know, maybe confusing to people because they'll see some of the stuff on the news that will show, you know, shootings and killings and all that other stuff. But down here in this little bubble that we're in, we don't seem to have that uh, effect down here. Well, people ask me, Jerry, is it safe, generally speaking, about Mexico? Remember, Mexico is a big country. And so what you want to do, you want to check. You want to maybe... Uh, Check with the American consulate, see if the area you'd like to travel in has any travel warnings there. Uh, and possibly you want to read up on the area, see if there's anything that's current that would maybe uh, change your mind about traveling in that particular area. So you need to be proactive and be safe. Overall, most of the uh, broadcast on news and stuff like that 
it is talking about border towns. And so, but in generally in the inner part of Mexico, it is safe. And so you can feel okay traveling, except be aware of very high uh, tourist areas. They are resort areas. So think about things like Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta, Mazatlan, uh, Merida, these type of areas that are very uh, friendly for tourists to come there. And that's where the cartel is, you know, hanging out because there's a lot of tourists. They want to get high, you know, and so they're looking for drugs and that. So that's where the problem comes. And that's where a person can get caught up and maybe crossfire and something like that. Hey, let's take another look at one more video here and uh, see what they talk about traveling to Mexico. In Mexico, the FBI is offering a reward in the case. Days since Maria del Carmen Lopez was taken from her home, the FBI now offering an up to $20,000 for information that brings Lopez home. Her family is scared, worried, but hopeful, trying to stay positive that the mother of seven will be found. This morning, an urgent search for a 63-year-old American citizen believed to be kidnapped in Mexico at her home in broad daylight. Maria del Carmen Lopez was watering the plants in front of her house when witnesses saw someone pull up in a white van and kidnapped her. A ransom call. Maria's family telling us the kidnappers reached out to a member of her family. The family says they believe this was a targeted kidnapping. Mexico is home to around 1.6 million Americans. The mother of seven was living in Pueblo Nuevo, a small town, less than 200 residents in the state of Colima. The State Department issuing a do not travel warning there due to crime and kidnapping. Currently, most of Mexico is under some sort of warning. Lopez is the fifth American kidnapped in Mexico in weeks. Please make a comment and let me know, does the idea of living or traveling to an area that is a high uh, destination for tourists and that, would it scare you? Would you be reluctant on uh, maybe doing that now with all the troubles that is happening here in Mexico? How about subscribing? It is free and we're going to keep you updated on Mexico and what's going on here. We can talk now an update here in uh, the Ajijic and Chapala area. Uh, like I say, it is a bubble here. It's a safe bubble. And uh, so we do have some petty crime. Okay, I think that's generally, that can be everywhere. You know, you'll get petty crime. Things like somebody breaking into a house, uh, maybe uh, so a car gets broke into, something like that. There are some little scams that uh, where they are taking off your license plate, you know, and using that license plate on another vehicle. And so little things like that. Uh, some of the uh, pickpockets that are here and that. But overall, we don't really find that we have a big problem with major crime. Now, in saying that, every once in a while, and this is something that happened a little bit about a month ago, and uh, it was a complex, houses one after another in this, actually it was a gated community, which is very surprising, but they were able to get in, possibly when the gate opened up, they you know got in, the person that uh, uh, was going through the gate, maybe in their car, they didn't wait long enough for that gate to close. And this is a problem that happens in gated communities. People drive through and they don't wait for that gate to close behind them to make sure that it has closed. This way somebody can't just sneak in. So this particular complex was robbed. Some robbers came in, they actually uh, knocked on the door, the owner came out, they were held up by gun uh, point, which is very unusual, and uh, they actually were robbed, and then they went to the next house, and they went to the next house, and they kept doing that. So this little development was hit by people that were, you know, uh, very scary situations. Yes, that does happen here. Now, for us that live here, you know, we hear about situations like that, and then we then become more aware of our surroundings to see, you know, how we can make it safer for ourselves and uh, see that. 
like anything, this area has become very popular. A lot of expats that live here. It may be actually the largest expat community in Mexico. Not quite sure if San Miguel is uh, first or second on that. But so a lot of people come here and they're not paying attention. In other words, they're using, they're wearing fancy jewelry or they have, you know, a fancy watch on and that thing. Women will have a lot of gold, maybe on their necklace or maybe in a bracelet. And uh, they then are a target for somebody to follow them home and rip them off. That's typically not only here in Mexico, in other countries too. So that's something that a person needs to be aware of. Next week, what I'm going to feature is going to be the cost of medical care here with Lori spending so much time this year in hospitals and that I'm gonna give you a brief cost analysis of what it costs down here. And also I'm gonna be talking about Medicare down here and can you get Medicare uh, services down here? Because typically you cannot uh, use Medicare outside of the United States, but I've got an angle for you that actually you'll be able to use it. Stay tuned for that little hot tip on Medicare in Mexico and can you use it. Hey Tron, thank you for all of your support. We really appreciate you and supporting us through your contribution. We still want you to know that we are taking your money. If you give us $2, we match it with our $2 and we give that back to the poor Mexican family here through the food bank. Well, good morning. Good morning. So, we like to get out here in the morning and watch the early sunrise, and so thought we would uh, say good morning to you. We want to share this experience with you, huh, Lord? Oh, yeah, it's actually a really beautiful sunrise, so come enjoy the sunrise with us. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting outside. This is actually our, uh, it's an outdoor terrace. Mm -hmm. We call them terraced here in Mexico. Uh, we call from Hawaii, we call it a lanai, but it's actually our family room. So we spend from the early mornings like this till uh, late at night. And so we Until watch, sunset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of times we watch the moon. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so welcome. So I'd like to start off this morning by... Lori, giving us an update. I see now you're swimming now. You're doing your therapy in the pool. Yeah, so yeah, today I have therapy come about 8 o'clock and then I have doctor appointment about um, 11 o'clock. How about you? Yeah, this morning I'm going to meet uh, Bob and Frank and uh, we're going to uh, go for a walk and then we're going to uh, have breakfast and then I'll be back here. I, I got to tell our friends here that uh, this Lori, through this therapy, has uh, had uh, a lady that stayed with her for, what, how long did Christina do? Um, she stayed with me about 15 days. 15 days. And so then uh, she needed to do some traveling herself. And uh, so we came up with a great idea, as we says, how about if we bring Lori's sister in? Uh, and Lori's sister lives in Hawaii. And she's gonna come in and this way she can take care of her sister and also she can cook her good Cambodian food. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So what, what's happened is, is that her sister has come up with uh, s some stomach uh, issues. And so uh, now Lori has to take care of her sister. Uh, <laughs> So it sort of has gone in reverse, but it's great because Lori is uh, doing so well in her recovery that you're able to do that. But, yeah, her physical therapist comes up uh, three times a week here. So, yeah. But, uh, so Lori, this uh, next coming week, what I'm gonna offer our viewers is, uh, we're gonna talk about medical cost here. Oh yeah, so... All the, all the expenses that we've gone through in the last 
Well, all this year, in fact. Yeah, total this year, man, we, we spend a lot of money because uh, the Medicare is not covered when you get sick in other countries. Yeah. Like this, you have to pay from your um, expense, your own expense. Yeah, you gotta pay, we got to pay it out of our pocket, you know, to the doctors and the hospitals. But we'll talk about that, you know, in this upcoming video. Yeah, so we will talk about that. Don't be shocked, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this year we cancel our traveling, so all the money we put on the traveling and do on the medical uh, going to be more than cost more than we do the traveling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Whoa! Wow. Look at here, Lori. Wow. Okay, the sun's coming up. Wow. Wow, really, really bright. Really bright. Yeah, nice, nice. And beautiful today was so clear. Yeah, yeah. I think it's temperature-wise, I, I didn't check exactly today, but it feels sort of like in the 50s, somewhere in there, maybe around 52 or something like that. So. Yeah, so we bun it up. Yeah, we like to get warmed up here, you know, and sit out here, so. Uh, well, uh, today it will be busy day, but tomorrow we have a uh, schedule. All the other thing, if my book is just in public for two weeks, I have a couple of friends have been older already, and uh, tomorrow we're going to do a celebration the book in public. Yay! Yeah. I can't put my arm out, it's cold <laughs> for me. <laughs> well, let, let me uh, fill you in, audience, on. Uh, the uh, book, Lori has written a book with a uh, ghost writer, and uh, her name is Beth, and Beth and uh, Lori collaborated on this book for what, how many years? Um, almost four years. Four years. Uh -huh. and, and so, uh, I don't know if you know this, viewers, uh, I know a lot of you do, that uh, the uh, story is Lori was in the Killing Fields era in Cambodia when uh, the country was taken over by a dictator and uh, everybody was thrown into concentration camps and millions of people were killed and Lori escaped the uh, Killing Field. Yeah. And yeah. so, so uh, she's written a book about her experience there. She walked out of the country with uh, two children but, but we're going to make a, a, a video about that. We'll give you more information, you know, later mm -hmm. on that. And so This is a, a real, it's my true story. I want to write it down to do what happened in um, 1975 till 1979. So it's my true story is from my own experience, from the knowledge, what I know what I can, I remember. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I think I've got my tea down here. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> the Papa in Colima. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere when we go traveling, we collect the cup. It's not very fancy, but our memory. Yeah. <laughs> If you've ever wondered the backstory in traveling in a certain area, well, I have the answers for you. If you would like to talk to me personally, you can book a phone consultation. You see the box on the bottom left, touch on it, and you will go to a booking site. And also remember, every Friday at 5 p.m. California time, we have a free video. We have over 500 videos to help you 